Jambo and a very good evening. Bwana Sifiwe, I trust that your day has been good and uh, I trust that you are keeping safe and that all is well with you. I hear some parts of Nairobi have rained. So I hope that wherever you are, you are blessed with rains. If you have, it hasn't come to your place, then yours is still on the way. So karibuni sana as we continue reflecting on the word of God and as we continue encouraging one another in scripture. So yesterday we were looking at this scripture of 1 John chapter 4 verses 1 to 3 and we were looking at the warning that John gives us or the scripture gives us not to be naive not to be not to be swayed by every weed that blows that we need to test every spirit so that we know whether what we are hearing and what whether we are being taught is from the false teachers or is from the true teachers of the gospel because in every generation and in every age there are those who come and distort the truth. So it is important that uh, we, we test the spirit. And so that is what we started yesterday. And we are going to be concluding that part today by looking at verse 4 to 6 of First John chapter 4. So today we are going to reflect on those three verses of verse 4, verse 5 and verse 6 but so that we can bring ourselves up to speed we shall look at the entire passage of verse 1 to 6 so i invite you now so that we can look at the text we look at the text of first john chapter 4 uh, we look at, we go to verse 1 again just to re refresh ourselves, test every spirit, but we are going to be uh, dwelling on verse 4, 5, and 6. But let us read from verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Verse 2. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Verse 4, this is where we are going to be considering today. You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Wow. You can underline that in your Bible. That because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Verse 5. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. So that is the text for today. And we are going to be reflecting on it. Going back to yesterday when we, are, when we were considering testing every spirit, the, the best way of testing the spirit is knowing 
the spirit of God. You see, this is the key. Verse 2 here, this is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Okay? You test the false spirit or the fake spirits or the evil spirits by knowing for sure the spirit of God. Okay? So, uh, you don't need to spend too much time studying the, the devil. So, when the Bible tells us to test every spirit, the Bible is not telling us in any way to spend our time eh, in the school of the demons and the devils so that we can understand them. Apana. What we need to do is to study God so that when we know God, anything that is not God is easily recognizable. In, uh, in the central banks of many countries, they, they have an anti-fake currency unit. You know? And in the anti-fake currency unit, what these people are trained to do, they are not trained, they don't spend their time looking for fake notes. No. They spend a lot of time studying the genuine notes so that even with their eyes closed, they can tell a genuine note. Therefore, it becomes very easy, it becomes very easy to know that which is not genuine. A child, when a child is born, they know their mother so much so that the moment a stranger comes in, they know that they are a it's a stranger. And what we need to do is we need to spend more time not studying the devil and demonology, but studying God. Because when we know God, then we will, we will recognize anything that is ungodly and anything that is fake. We are going to smell it from a distance. So, you need to know God so much so that anything that comes in the name of God and is not God will not even uh, waste your time. That is what you need. And I have often said that sometimes I have been perplexed when people are, are praying. And sometimes in prayer, I have often had people leading intercessory prayers in in, in group meetings and in churches. And sometimes you find that somebody in a prayer that takes, let's say, 10 minutes of intercessory prayers, group inter intercessory prayers, or 15 minutes, you find that somebody out of the 15 minutes of prayer, they have spent 10 minutes addressing the devil. And so I ask myself, Prayer is not about addressing the devil. Prayer is about addressing God. Why would you spend so much time eh, ukikemea shetani, shetani na kukemea, shetani na, ku, na kuamulisha, shetani nini, shetani nini, shetani nini. In fact, anybody who, is, who does not know about God and Satan, hearing our prayers from outside our our doors our church doors might might be tempted to ask and who is this and and who is this devil he seems to be very popular because every other two sentences devil every other two sentences shetani so it is more important that we spend time not on the devil but we spend time with God. When we spend time with God, 
then we are going to have no problem at all recognizing the evil one. Now, in our text today of verse 4, we are told that we are from God. That is an assurance that when we have been born again, we belong to God. And there is this here golden bells hymn uh, that goes, I belong to Jesus. It was a happy day. La, la, la. When his blood most precious. La, 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 la. You know, I belong to Jesus. And this is what 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 is telling us. That let, let there be no doubt in our minds and in our hearts. We belong to to Jesus and because we belong to God then even when the evil spirits even when the false teachers come they cannot overcome us they cannot sway us they cannot lead us astray why because when we belong to God we are in God and God is in us and he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. So, can you imagine this? That God of universe, the God of universe has found his, his place inside your tiny little heart. He dwells in there. And because he is the God of universe, and because he dwells in you, then you have already overcome the false teachers. You don't have to worry about them. So, he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And therefore, you don't have to worry about anything. Why? Because he who is in you. It is not about you. It is about him who is in you. It is not by power. It is not by your human power that you will overcome the world. It is not by your human power that you are going to be able to discern the, 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 spirits, the, for, the spirits of the false teachers. No, it is by the power that is given you by Jesus Christ. It is by the power of God. The power of God dwells in our hearts. Okay? And because of that, then in verse 5 we are told that the false teachers are of the world. And because they are of the world, their viewpoint, the way they look at things is a viewpoint of the world. So, there is what we call the worldly viewpoint. But we are not of the worldly viewpoint. We are of the Christian viewpoint. When we look at things, when we argue out things, we are arguing out things and we are looking at things from the perspective, not of the world, but from the divine perspective. In other words, when we look at issues, what we ask ourselves is, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? What would God think of this situation? We don't look at what the world thinks because the world has its own criteria of looking at things. And it is important that we do not compete with the world. No. No. Because our perspective is different. You know, in Kenya, we have this uh, big mountain that is called Mount Kenya. Now, Mount Kenya, from one side, you can see the snow on a sunny, bright morning and clear sky. On the side, if you are looking at it from, uh, if you are coming from Nairobi and heading towards Meru or heading towards Karatina, Nyeri, Nanyuki. If you look at Mount Kenya, you are going to see the snow. 
But if you are coming from the other side of the mountain, from the other side of Meru, the snow cap uh, uh, peak is not visible. The snow is not visible from that side. Now, if you told somebody that there was snow on Mount Kenya and they had never been on this other side of the mountain, they would not understand. And that is exactly how we look at the world. We have been in this world. We are still in this world, but we are not of this world. Our perspective is different. We are looking at the same world, but we are looking at it from two different angles. So, and that makes all the difference. Our world view is different. We look at things from a spiritual angle. They look at things from, from the face value and from the physical and natural and angle. We look at things from the supernatural angle. So that is the difference. And that is the difference of the world view. And it is important that we understand that in this world, we are living at an age where everything is relative. And it is important for the people that we speak to and we interact with to understand that they are, all, they are absolutes. We are living in a world where there is no absolute truth. Where truth is determined by consensus. So that if people, if, if people sit down and agree on something, that becomes their truth. But for us, that is not our basis of truth. Our basis of truth is the unchanging character of God. And therefore, our truth is unchangeable. The truth of the world depends on consensus. So whatever is taken to be the truth for a particular moment can change depending on the consensus. Our senators are still struggling in the Senate trying to come up with a formula for sharing, uh, for sharing uh, revenue. I wish they were sitting there and burning the mid midnight oil, thinking of ways of creating the revenue. But they are busy spending numerous man hours discussing and disagreeing on how to share revenue. And they have not even had time to discuss on how to create that revenue in the first place and particularly in these days of these uh, hard economic times. So, whatever they will eventually come up with will be their truth for that moment. That truth may not necessarily be the truth tomorrow because it is a consensus truth in quotes. But our truth is based on the character of God. And that truth is unchangeable. And that truth is absolute. And that is what John is saying. And John is saying, finally in verse 6, that one way of knowing these people who are false teachers is that they have refused to receive our message. You see, John is talking about the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That the false teachers have refused to receive the gospel message. They have taken a portion here and a portion there and they have refused a portion here and a portion there. So it is important that we know that for us who are in God, then we must take in the whole counsel of God. So may the Lord help us so that we are not swayed by, by false teachings. May the Lord help us to 
get deeply in him so that we can easily recognize these false teachers whenever they come. So may the Lord bless all of us and may the Lord grant us a spirit of discernment and may the Lord meet with you at your points of need. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all of us say, Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you because you are greater than what, whatever the world can offer. And we thank you because we belong to you. And because we belong to you, then we are overcomers. And the world and the false teachers cannot overcome us. They cannot drive us away from you. And so this evening I pray that we are going to be deeply rooted in you. So that whatever comes our way, we are going to remain steadfast and firm and we are going to overcome the world because you who is in us is greater than the world. I pray for each and every person listening to me. Some of them need assurance of salvation that truly they belong to God. Some of them because of the situations that are surrounding them they are feeling like they are overwhelmed. But we want to thank you tonight. Because in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. You are giving us your reassurance. That you are greater than any outside force. That may be brought against us. So we pray that you may help us to trust you. Even when we are going through raging storms. We ask that, Lord, your blessings be upon us. Hear us, O God, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you very, very much. It's a pleasure to have you. And uh, yeah, so we are still moving on. And so please look at the world from the, wa from the viewpoint of God. Don't just look at, uh, the, uh, at the world from the viewpoint of the world. Otherwise, if you do that, you are going to be overwhelmed. But if you look, if you get an aerial view, a view from heaven, then you are going to know that things are going to eventually work out together for good and you will overcome whatever you are faced with. So thank you very much. I would like to recognize and appreciate those I can see on my screen. And Ambe, God bless you. And Bogwa, God bless you. Kevin Kagili, God bless you. Gladys Kibe, God bless you. Helen, Helen, God bless you. Uh, Joseph Mutweri, God bless you. Esther Washira, God bless you. May the Lord grant you your breakthrough. Priscilla Kerothi, God bless you. Isaac Karato, God bless you. Anita Jaden, God bless you. Wine Kemani, God bless you. Esther Ivan, God bless you. Kazi Angoge, Bariki Wasana. Alan Jenga, God bless you. Martha Mwaura, God bless you. Joe Mundia, God bless you. Anu Wanjiko, barikiwa sana. Domisiano Kobia, barikiwa sana. Sharin, Sharin Karanja, God bless you. Eve Kingston, God bless you. Oh, may the Lord continue consoling you following the loss of your dad, Eve Kingston. Bwana awafariji sana, sana, sana. Uh, Matthew Majale, God bless you. Kama George, God bless you. Wine, Wine Ireri, God bless you. Yes. So, Asante Nisana. Uh, like I have told you before, members of CCIC, we lost uh, Elizabeth last week and we are going to be laying her to rest on Thursday. 
And then again this morning we were we received the news that one of us Mze Batia who has been ailing for a while uh, was rested today and so that family from Hilton community they also need our continued prayers so please let us continue remembering those people in prayer at this difficult time so until we meet again tomorrow 8 o'clock same time it's a very good night from over here and god bless you <music>